Hi everyone. So in this video, what I'll be covering is sort of how to structure or write the EE. Now, this is a very much a suggestion structure. This is just my opinion on what I think should work, but I'm also going to go through the also very strict guidelines for certain aspects of the EE. So I've sort of touched on a little bit of the writing in the last video, but this is meant to be a bit more of like an expansion of that and a bit more detailed. So let's first of all say what is graded. We have two things that are graded, our essay and our reflections. Now this edit video is going to be focusing on the essay and the next video will be focusing on the reflections. So in terms of formatting your essay, you need to make sure you're using 12 font font, something that is legible and readable. You need to make sure that it is all double spaced and all pages are numbered. Now what's also important is that you have no candidate or school name seen anywhere on the actual essay and 4,000 words maximum. If you go above 4,000 words, they will stop reading once they've reached 4,000 words and you'll only be marked up till there and probably marked down because it does not end properly. They stop at 4,000 words. So pretty much make sure your essay is underneath that word count, please. Now let's also discuss what is included in the word count. So the introduction, main body and conclusion and quotations, those are all included in the word count. Now footnotes are included if it's just clarifying something. So if it is not a reference or anything like that, it will count to your word count. However, footnotes that are references, they are considered fine. That is not part of the word count. Now other stuff that is not included in the word count is the contents page, maps, charts, diagrams, annotated illustrations, tables, and equations. And that's kind of helpful because in a maths EE, you would have a lot of equations. So all that will not be counting towards your word count. It's just the explanation part that will be counting. And any citations and references, and bibliography, um, field notes or anything like that, they don't count for the word count. Same thing, the bibliography at the end does not count for the word count. And your reflections, they have a separate word count. So that does not count towards this 4,000 words part of the essay. Now, what should you be including in your essay? You should be including a title page, contents page, an introduction, a body, conclusion, references, and potentially appendices if they are needed. So as you can see, this is very much a very sparse skeleton structure, but you've got to make sure you have all these main sections. If you don't, you will get marked down. Now in your title page, you should be including the title of your essay, a research question, and the subject that it's under, and the word count. Now what is important is the title and the research question are two different things. I've gotten a lot of detail about the research question, but I have not really talked much about the title. So the research question is phrased as a question. So how, to what extent, can we model, all those kind of things, that is your research question. Your title is going to be similar to your research question, but it should be stated as a statement, not a question. So you could say, modeling the use, the, uh, the spread of disease using, I don't know, SIR modeling or anything like that. That would be a title, while Research question would be like, how accurately can we model disease using this model? So as you can see, those are two different things. So title is a statement. It should still be clear, concise, and encapsulate what you're covering in your essay. But your research question is phrased as a question. So you need to have both of those things in your title page. Very important. And yep, the word count, as long as your word count's under 4,000 words, that's fine. And also include the subject. So if you're doing a mass E, you should say mathematics, applications or analysis or whatever you're doing. So always include the subject that the essay is under. Now when you're doing your contents page, pretty standard, you could show um, you should show the page number for each individual section. So you should have all the sections, so introduction, body, conclusion. Within the body, you should also include the subheadings within the body that you may include and the pet corresponding page numbers for each individual section. It's all very important, so include that please in your contents page, make sure it's legible format. And once again, this does not count towards your word count. Same with the title page, it does not count to your word count. Now, when you do your introduction, you want to introduce the topic area. You want to sort of start broadly and sort of talk about the broad implications of your topic area and gradually narrow your focus and slowly start building up towards that research question. What you sort of want to build up to is like this thing called a knowledge gap, as I call it. And that's like, an area that you are going to try to fill, an area of research that we don't know too much or something that is important to cover that you are going to cover yourself, something that you think your essay will answer. So that's basically what you want to do. You want to sort of talk about how I don't know, prior research has not demonstrated X, Y, Z things. 
Hence, I will be exploring that research and then lead into your research question. So that's sort of what your introduction does, sort of introduces that broad area in any key definitions, key ideas, or also make sure you have appropriate references for all of that. Any ideas that are not yours, you should be referencing. That's sort of what your intro is for, just sort of introduce that idea. Now, you also need to make sure that you state your aims, and that's very important. So after you've gone through your research question, sort of say your aims. Oh, now this essay will aim to answer this question through and then X, Y, Z things. And then what I also suggest doing is having a brief plan. So saying, first I will do this, and then I will do this. Having achieved this, I will be able to do this. So sort of have a brief plan or a brief outline of your methods that you'll be employing throughout the body of the essay. And that way it is very clear when you're going through the essay for a, like for a marker, they'll be like reading through the body and going, oh yeah, I remember he brought this up in the in and they brought it up in the intro. And that makes a lot more sense because I can see how it's all linking back. So very important when you're doing introduction at the end of your intro, put a little plan of how you're going to structure your essay and explain it accordingly. Now, when you're doing your essay body, once again, similar to IA, this is going to be the bulk. This is where most of your maths is going to be, most of your explanations, all that kind of important stuff. So your body should include a focus on mathematics as well as having written explanations where appropriate. So you should have equations, but also explanations as you're going through it, explaining what's going on. Now those equations do not count for the word count, but those explanations, they do. Now, all graphs, diagrams, tables, and other illustrations need to be clearly labeled and referenced at some point in the written description. So if you have a graph, you need to put, first of all, put a little caption saying figure one and all that, but you also in your actual essay need to say, need to reference figure one. You need to sort of say figure one demonstrates Otherwise, if you have a graph or a table and you never actually reference it in the essay, it is useless because you're not explaining it and you will not do particularly well in certain criteria because of that. Now, you need to also make sure you number all equations and formulate or label it in some way, shape or form. I prefer to number, so I'll call it equation one or equation two or equation three. That way I can easily refer back to it. I'm like, oh, equation one shows or if I want to sub equation two into equation three, all that kind of stuff is a lot easier if I label them with a number. So that's something I very much suggest you do especially because in an extended essay, there's going to be a lot of equations. It's going to be a long essay. So I think it, labeling equations will be very good for keeping track of what is going on. All the work that you do in your body should be working to achieve the stuff and answer, achieve your aims and answer that research question that you've laid out. And everything should logically build upon itself. You you lay a foundation with step one, then your next step will be building on that. Step three, step four, all that will be logically building on itself to help achieve that research question aim. Now, you also should be including subheadings, in my opinion, because 4,000 words is very long. It'll be very hard to keep track of a long maths essay if you do not have subheadings to sort of show where everything is. That is also very important, in my opinion. Make sure it is clear what you are doing to the reader and we're gonna assume that they are not completely familiar with your topic area. So we're gonna assume they have a, math a level of mathematical literacy. They will understand pretty standard stuff. They'll understand the core syllabus topics that you have covered in Maths HL or SL or whatever. We will assume that they have that knowledge, but not much beyond that. So you need to still explain a fair bit if you're going beyond the syllabus or apply it in a very specific practical context. You need to make sure everything is very clear and very easy to understand. So you may need to simplify a few things or use layman's terms or any of those kind of things to sort of, or use an example. I feel like examples tend to help a lot. So any of those kind of things to make it very clear to the marker what is going on, what everything means, that is all fairly important. You also need to define all key terms and pronumerals. Very important. You know, if I want to use E equals MC squared, I need to explain what E is, what M is, C, all that. We need to make sure we define all our pronumerals. Otherwise, it's just letters on a page, doesn't mean anything to a marker. You also need to make sure you use proper mathematical formatting and correct symbols, and you can use LaTeX or Microsoft Word equation mode or anything like that to make sure that it is the correct formatting and using correct symbols. Now, where possible, you should be incorporating both primary and secondary research. So primary is like your own graphs, your own diagrams, your own statistics, your own data. That's all primary. Secondary is other, re other people's research, other ideas, other formulae all those kind of things that is secondary. Try to include both where possible and where it's appropriate. Now you also need to ensure that it's an independent voice. You are still doing stuff yourself. 
you are not going to be just regurgitating stuff that other people have said. You still need to be writing and explaining things and doing your own actual exploration. So that is very important. So that's why I'm saying like having that whole step-by-step -step structure is very good because you are clearly going through a process yourself and building on everything you are doing. So that is what the independent voice is about, sort of doing something yourself and making it very clear that this is your own working and you're incorporating other people's work. Of course, that is completely fine, incorporating other people's ideas as long as it's appropriately referenced and you're doing something new with it or something unique, all those kind of things. That is what makes it an independent voice. Now, when you do your conclusions, this is where you discuss the extent that you have answered your research question. So once you've gone through the body and you finished your final step, you want to evaluate how well you answered that research question, the outline at the start. Remember, everything in the body should be building up to the answering that research question and that aim that you laid out in your intro. So you should be going through your strengths, your weaknesses, and your areas of future investigation. Now, I'll tell you right now, there will definitely be weaknesses in your extended essay. No essay is perfect. You're going to be talking about maybe you had too many assumptions. Maybe it's not applicable to certain people or certain groups or all that kind of thing. So you need to talk about the weaknesses that you have in your essay. Very important. Um, certain things that you always consider is applicability, as I was saying before. Confounding variables. Confounding variables is like, you know... Um, other things that could have interfered with your experiment that you did not properly account for. This would be very important for a statistical maths EE, something like that. So those kind of things, um, what else is there? Maybe method, maybe too many assumptions. That's also an important thing to also cover. That could be a, a weakness or limitation. Maybe your modeling was not completely accurate. That's a weakness, but that's completely fine as long as you acknowledge it. So this is sort of where you sort of evaluate how well you have achieved it. What are some things that went really good and you should also talk about your strengths. Obviously, you should be talking about stuff that went well, how well you, maybe how accurate your model is, or how you accounted for certain variables, all those kind of things. Those would be good strengths to talk about. And you also need to talk about areas of future investigation. So, you know, if you have like your model, you created a model, maybe you want to see how well applied it is to other situations. Or maybe if you had certain variables you didn't account for, maybe you want to look at how those variables could have interfered with your experiment. All those kind of things. Also, what's also important is, what are some more questions that have arisen? Maybe you haven't fully answered your research question, and that's completely fine, as long as you acknowledge it. You can say, to an extent I have, but we have X, Y, Z questions that still remain. These could still be further investigated. That is completely fine. As long as you properly articulate that and acknowledge it, that is fine. Now, you also need to think about applicability to other fields. Maybe you have created a new formula. Maybe you did it in physics, but maybe it could also be applied to chemistry, something like that or engineering. So that is sort of where you can discuss, maybe these ideas could be applied to other fields if like translated properly. So those are kind of important things to cover. And you can also think about like, has your research like created a foundation that other people can now build on? If, if it has, if you've introduced something new or interesting, you can sort of talk about how this has laid the groundwork and other people can build upon it with their own research and maybe even give suggestions for ways people could build on that research. I think those are all very, very worthwhile things to discuss in your conclusion. Now, what you should also talk about is have you demonstrated new ideas? Have you reaffirmed old ones? Have you contradicted old ideas? Any of those kind of things are very, very important to cover in your conclusion. And yeah, as long as you cover all that, that should hopefully be okay. So after that, you got your references and bibliography. So very important. Do not plagiarize. If you plagiarize, I'd be so strict about that. They might not even let you have a diploma. Very, very strict. Do not plagiarize. Do not steal other people's ideas. Do not do something that was someone else's idea and not reference it properly. So throughout your EE, you should be using in-text or footnotes to reference everything. Every external idea that is not yours, you should be referencing properly using either in-text or footnotes. And now you should also be making sure you use reliable sources only. So for your EE, they're a bit stricter should be doing scholarly work for the most part, wherever possible. Textbooks, all um, university books, all those are fine. Websites, generally speaking, try to avoid them where possible, especially if it's a .com website, try to avoid that. If it's a .edu, maybe that should be okay, but anything .com, try to avoid where possible in your EE. Now, at the end of your EE, you should have a bibliography, very important. So there should be a properly formatted reference list and include detailed information about each source. Now you can do any format you want, as long as it is consistent, as long as it's an established version, established format, that's fine. doesn't matter. As long as you do one format, you choose it and you stick with it throughout your whole EE. 
Now I'd also suggest making sure you put all your references in alphabetical order. That is fairly important. And there are certain websites out there that can help generate bibliography references, such as RefMe or BibMe. And there's also a Chrome extension called MyBib, which can create references for you. These all may not be perfect though, so it's important you check that all the information it's been fed into the machine is correct before you copy it all into bibliography. And the last thing we have is the appendices. Now these are completely optional. Now, this is where you include stuff that is not completely necessary to your EE, but markers may want to refer to it. So if you're doing a maths EE on statistics, you should be including any really large data sets that are not that are huge and don't really add much, that is fine. You In your actual EE, you might include the summary, maybe the mean, the median, the standard deviation, all that kind of stuff. Now also similarly, if you are doing repetitive working or excessive proofs or something like that, you can include those proofs to the appendix if it is not completely necessary for understanding what is going on in your actual essay. Though certain working out, you should be making sure it's in the bulk of your essay, in your main body, but certain things like repetitive stuff or proofs, if they're not necessary, if, you, if proving is not part of your research question, you can include that in the appendix. Now, you also need to make sure you cannot consider this a place to include more information that should be in your EE. This is not a place to fish for more words to put stuff in there. That is not the case at all. So please bear that in mind. This is not a place to just put extra stuff. You can't just put your discussion in there or your conclusion. This is just a place for extra stuff that your markers may refer to if they want to just check a few things, but you're gonna assume that they will not be marking it. It's just there in case, because it may enhance like their understanding of it. So just be aware of that. And that's it. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.